for your ministry this morning. Today I want to do something special. If the children would all come forward, and we want to, any child, or if you're young at heart, you can come, just kidding. Any of the kids, I know we have nursery age, we have uh, everyone is joining us together. Yeah, right over here on this side, please, kind of. If anyone wants to be baby Jesus, you can, no, don't be in the manger, no, don't go. Bad idea, bad idea. Whoa, okay. Now I'm getting claustrophobic here. Well, <laughs> what I wanted to do is read the Christmas story uh, to you, kind of make it a special, um, kind of a special time, but as you can see, we're kind of running out of time. So I wondered if we could, if I think you guys know the Christmas story really well, you did the program a couple weeks ago. Would you like to tell the Christmas story to the people? Could you tell us how it went? Yeah? Well, how, did it, how did it begin? What was the first part of the... Jameson was shaking his head. What was the beginning? How did the story start? By Jesus getting born. Okay, Jesus was born. What were you going to say? God's plan of redemption began to unfold in the city in Galilee called Nazareth. Whoa, did you memorize that? Or say it louder. God's plan of redemption began to unfold in a city in Galilee called Nazareth. Nice, nice. Okay, before that, um, who was Mary? Who, oh, man, I just gave it away. Who was Jesus' mom? Mary. So what did the angel, how did she know that uh, she would be his mom? Yeah, Jackson. Right. The angel came to Mary and said she would have a baby called Jesus. Okay. The angel told her, yeah. Do you have any more to add to that? An angel of the Lord appeared unto Mary and told, okay. her that you, told her that you would be the father of the Lord and the Son of God. Okay. Who, who was going to be the father? Joseph. Joseph. What it did, how did Joseph know that? Was he just like wandering through the town one day and was like, whoa, I'm going to be a dad? I, I don't know. Oh. I do. Oh, I what do. happened? An angel came in its stream and said that you're going to be the father of Jesus. Oh, wow. You're going to be the father of Jesus. And then what happened? <laughs> Levi knows. <laughs> okay, so Mary and Joseph find out they're going to have a baby, and it's going to be a savior named Jesus, right? And then what happens? He was born, poof. And... Oh. They traveled to Bethlehem, and then, that's what you're going to say? Why did they travel to Bethlehem? That's kind of weird. Caesar Augustus was taking the census. Oh, Caesar Augustus. Is that what you're going to say? Um, yeah, kind of. <laughs> you can say it. Okay, so they had a census. What's a census, um, you? What's a census? What's a census, Josie? Josie, you're not shy. You guys are shy. A census is like a census bill. A census what? A census is a census bill. Yeah, what's a census, though? It's where, like, um, all the adults go to their town where they were born, and they take count. Oh, they take count of all the adults. Okay. So the word they have, so they had to go to Bethlehem. Hmm. So while they're on the road to Bethlehem, what happened? Did they make it and they counted? Did they have to like? They tried to find this place to stay, but they had to go in the barn. Okay. They, they were going to um somewhere to like a hotel mm -hmm. to get there to get the baby born. Mm -hmm. But someone, a nice man, he said we have no more room, but there's a manger out back. Oh yeah, out back. It's good. So he gave him a manger. What's a manger? Where the animals are kept. Where the animals? Okay. <laughs> it's perfect. I think that's actually the exact one that Jesus laid in, too. Okay. All right. So they're out back, and they're laying in a manger. And then what happens? 
Yeah, Jesus is born after he was laid in a manger. Perfect. Okay, and then what happened? The three wise men came and gave him gifts. What? The three wise men came and gave him gifts. Okay, the three wise men came and gave them gifts. How did they know where to find Jesus? They're like, why did they be? Oh, the star. Whoa, everybody knows that. Good, good. Hi. So there was just a star that happened to be shining, but there's like a million stars out there. Like, big, big, bright star. It was big and bright. Okay, then what else happened? Oh, you have some. What else happened? Yeah, we just talked about that. Who else? They followed the star. They followed the star? The shepherds. What happened to the shepherds? Who wants to tell us that part? Hi. <laughs> they said hi. The shepherds, the shepherds, after hearing what the angels had told them, the shepherds had gone to Bethlehem to see Jesus. Okay. What did the angels say to the shepherd? There's a lot of angels in our story. What do the angels say? Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all of the people. Today in the town of David, the Savior has been born to you. Man, you must have been an, an angel in the Christmas program to memorize that. Good job. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, so the angel tells them, and then they go, and what do they find? Jesus. They found Jesus. Yeah, and what did he look like? A tiny, small baby. Oh, baby. <laughs> okay. What was, uh, like, what if there was 20 other babies in Bethlehem that night? What was? He was in a manger, okay. Yeah. And then he was, any other significant? No, not really. Okay. Okay, then what? What did the shepherds do after that? Yeah, they told everybody. What did the wise men do after they gave their gifts? They praised him. They praised him, yeah. And then what? They left, right? <laughs> okay, anything else significant after the wise men and the shepherd leave the, the scene? No. No, that's it? You guys think you covered it all? Yeah. Good, good job. I think you did too. You guys understand the Christmas story better now than you ever have? Awesome. Give them a hand. Thank you, guys. You can sit down now. Good job. Good job. I think my job is threatened. Some of you are going to be pastors and storytellers in the future. I can see it. I want to get in uh, right to it. Um, we have a few verses that will be on your screen today. Uh, we've, done our, we've been doing our uh, series called Christmas Stories and gone through each uh, person involved. And obviously today would be Jesus, right? So we're going to learn some lessons from Jesus and specifically from his birth, kind of surrounding his birth. The whole New Testament almost has lessons on Jesus. We're not going to get into all the ones that he taught us, but... Here's a few of the uh, portions of the story that tell us uh, who Jesus is. He didn't have any speaking parts in the Bible story. Do you know why? Because he's a baby. He's a baby. Yeah. Okay, so we can read about what other people uh, said surrounding him. So Luke 1, verses 30 through 33, the angel tells Mary, do not be afraid, for you have found favor with God, and behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. Jesus. And then this is who he will be. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob, that's Israel, forever, and his kingdom will have no end. And then the angel, like the kids told us, then the angel speaks to Joseph in Matthew 2.22. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. And in um, Luke 2.10, uh, the angel, this is talking to the shepherds, do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you Good news of great joy, which will be for all the people. For today in the city of David, that's Bethlehem, there has been born for you a Savior 
who is Christ the Lord. And Josie, you quoted that word for word earlier. Good job. And eight days go by after Jesus is born, and they, what was kind of the typical thing for them to do in their religion and the uh, Judaism is to uh, take the baby to the temple to have him dedicated, and it was customary for their uh, purification, much like we bring children to dedicate them to the Lord. Mary and Joseph are bringing uh, Jesus to the temple to dedicate him to the Lord. And there's a man in Luke 2.25, a man named Simeon, and this man was righteous and devout And he was looking for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ, the Messiah. And he came in the Spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to carry out for him the custom of the law, then he took him into his arms and he blessed God and said, Now, Lord... You are releasing your bondservant to depart in peace according to your word. My eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all people, a light of revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people, Israel. Many great things were spoken about Jesus, describing who he was born to be. Quite possibly the most surprising part of the story is the way in which he came. Most people knew the prophecy that unto us a child is born. So they knew the Messiah would be born. They expected him to come as a baby, naturally as a baby. But perhaps what caught them off guard was the family that he came through. Most probably expected him to be born of, uh, of, to a queen or to a princess, to a royal family, uh, for sure. The prophet said he would be uh, in the descendants of King David, and there was other kings in that line uh, as well. But God chose a humble woman and her merciful f- uh, fiancé, neither of which had political power or or any other high social status that might have been expected for the Messiah to be born into. And this was the first lesson of many, and Jesus taught it the night he chose to be born. Humility. Mary and Joseph scramble to find a place to stay, and the only thing available uh, was a stable with a manger. There's... No, no crib around. And so they probably poofed up some hay and made it soft for the baby to lay in. And if Joseph is anything like me, and I, I really doubt he was, but after getting Mary and, and Jesus all settled in and, you know, relaxed and, and comfortable, I picture Joseph probably sitting there taking it all in and he's probably looking at baby Jesus and thinking, man, of, of all the times, why, why now? Of all the places, why here? Why couldn't you come while we were at home? Or, or why did it have to be the busiest time when there's no rooms available? Why? Why? Because the lesson Jesus is teaching us here, uh, and he's teaching throughout his entire ministry, is to humble yourself. I read earlier Philippians 2, 5 through 8, have this attitude in yourself, which was also in Christ Jesus, who although he existed in the form of God, did not regard equality with God a thing to be grasped, but he emptied himself, taking the form of of a bondservant and being made in the likeness of men. Being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. The humble way he was born, he, he even died in a humble, humiliating way to be 
hung on a cross in front of uh, the public. Right from the beginning, Jesus teaches us this lesson of humility. Jesus steps out of heaven and he steps right into a messy, messy situation. The abuse and and the persecution that was happening in Israel in that moment was intense. But Jesus willfully and humbly stepped into the mess. John, in his gospel, gives a creative way of telling the birth story. Where Luke and Matthew give us the specific details, John uh, kind of does it in an application way or in a creative way. He was um, fully God, yet fully man. And just a quick note on this, John uses the capitalized word, word, referring to Jesus. And he does this because Jesus is the personification of wisdom. He's the communication of God the Father to humanity. And Jesus uh, revealed to the world the word of God. And so John creatively uh, identifies Jesus as the word. I'm going to read from uh, John 1, 1 through 3. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him, all things were made. Without him, nothing was made that has been made. And then I'm going to jump to verse 14. And then during our candle lighting, I'm going to come back and read the the middle part. Verse 14 says, The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father full of grace and truth. John opens his gospel identifying Jesus as being with God since the beginning, in creation. It's a clear statement of the coexistence of the Son with the Father from all of eternity. He also declares the word was God. That's deity, that Jesus was God. Jesus, the Word, was the mediator in creation. God spoke the universe into existence through the Son as the living Word. And without Him, nothing was made in creation that has been made. Jesus, the Word, is the mediator between God and mankind. In 1 Timothy 2.5, it tells us that. And then Hebrews 1.1 1, 1 also proclaims the great truth that Christ is the fullest and finest revelation of God to mankind. He is the very expression of God himself, and he's actively disclosing God to mankind. So then, as Galatians 4.4 4 reads, when the time had fully come, John 1.14 tells us the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. Emmanuel, God with us, laying there in the manger, God in the form of a baby. Angels had declared to the shepherds, this day is born to you a Savior who is Christ the Lord. That's a powerful phrase, a Savior who is Christ the Lord. We know the word Savior is what the name Jesus means, as it was told to Mary and Joseph. So Jesus, Christ the Lord, is born. Christ means the Messiah, the Anointed One. Lord ascribes great reverence and acknowledges complete service and submission to the supreme being. This baby is the Messiah that they've longed for, the one who will save and redeem them, the one they will worship and bow down to. But first, he's a baby in a manger, subjecting himself to all the human laws of growth 
Or if it was me, I would probably fast forward past the junior high and high school years straight to the good times. <laughs> he said he humbled himself. He became hungry, thirsty, and tired. I bet he cried as that's the main way babies communicate, right? I'm sure he dirtied a lot of diapers to say it cleanly. He had to be uh, fed. He had to be held. He had to be rocked to sleep. The creator and God of the entire universe humbled himself and became dependent on Mary and Joseph to parent him. He left the glories and splendors of heaven, and he stepped into a messy world. And friends, he still does today. Our Lord, our Savior, our Messiah has stepped into our mess. In that moment when Mary wraps Jesus in the swaddling clothes and lays him in the manger, it's this monumental shift in history, and she's probably wondering, I, why here? Why in, in this place and in, in this setting? Prophecy is fulfilled to the shepherds and the new covenant between God and mankind find its, finds its beginnings right here in a manger. I don't know what lullaby Mary you know, might have been singing to get Jesus to sleep, but I think a way in a manger <laughs> would be perfect. God was making a way for all mankind to reach him. Jesus was the way. He was the truth and the life. No one can come to the Father but through him. And as another song says, God made a way in a manger. If you're here today and you've never received Jesus as your Lord and, and your Savior, and would you do so today? Respond in your heart asking Jesus to step into your mess. I'm going to ask if the worship team would come and ushers if you would prepare uh, for communion. We're going to take communion in just a moment and, and then after that we're going to have a, a close with a candle light portion of our service. Communion here is not closed. Uh, you don't have to be a member of uh, Bethel, but we do have to be a member of the family of God. And this is why we're taking communion, is to honor Him and to recognize that He's our Lord. He's our Savior. He's our Christ. On this uh, Christmas Eve Sunday, this is a special time that we can reflect and the worship team is going to sing away in a manger and it might be a funny way of uh, not your typical communion song but the last verse is powerful in my mind and they're going to sing the couple of the verses while we're receiving communion and when you get back to your seat we're going to join with them for the, the final verse to get and sing it together we have a lot of children here uh, so I'm going to leave it up to the parents if you think you're child is ready for uh, taking communion. Uh, 